Hi everyone, this is Ramalinga Prasad Guppa. Welcome to my channel, Pharma World. Today's topic is interpretation of requirements of Q1E guideline. Let us see the intent of Q1A R2. The stability studies are conducted as per ICH Q1A R2 at various stress conditions. Q1E guideline is a supporting requirement for Q1A R2 guideline. Q1A R2 prescribes the conditions for carrying out stability studies. Q1E prescribes the requirements for assigning the shelf life for the product. So it is necessary to understand the Q1A R2 guideline fully before going into the evaluation guideline Q1E. Section 2.1.2 Stress testing is to establish the degradation products and intrinsic stability of the molecule. Basic stress testing requirements are described in this section. Testing at intermediate conditions is required when there is a failure at accelerated conditions. There is a requirement to carry out the study at intermediate condition only when there is a failure in accelerated stability study. It is recommended to initiate the intermediate study conditions also along with the accelerated study data. The strategic reasoning for this approach will be discussed in the coming up slides. Accelerated test conditions are carried out for generating supporting data to establish the shelf life based on the long term study conditions. This is important because the shelf life is assigned based on the review of the data from both accelerated and long term study. The intent of this video is to explain the relationship between the data from the accelerated data and long term study data. Let us go into the understanding of the intent of Q&E. This guideline describes when and how extrapolation can be considered when proposing a retest period for a drug substance or a shelf life for a drug product that extends beyond the period covered by available data from the stability study under the long term storage conditions. Q1E prescribes conditions for extrapolation or extension of retest period or shelf life based on the data available from the long term study. It is important to understand the decision tree in Appendix A in the guideline. If the decision tree is understood fully, the intent of the entire guideline will be much clearer. The decision tree can be used as a flashlight on the entire information of the guideline requirement. This is a focus light for full knowledge of the requirement. Let us understand each case separately. While explaining each case, keep the copy of the decision tree handy to follow easily and for better understanding. Let us see the case one. Tabulate and or plot stability data on all attributes at all storage conditions and evaluate each attribute separately. First of all, tabulate all numerical data in Excel sheet. Excel sheet is recommended because all statistical evaluation could be carried out easily on this Excel sheet. Data from both accelerated conditions and long term conditions have to be considered for evaluation. Of course, accelerated study will be done one time during the process validation stage for six months. 
long term study will generate data after every year significant change at accelerated conditions within 6 months in case 1 consider it as no significant change is defined as failure to meet specifications for a drug substance and variation of 5% if it is a drug product or a dosage form but under section 2.4.2 q1e guideline suggests that some physical changes can be expected to occur at the accelerated conditions and would not be considered as significant change for example softening of a suppository that is designed to melt at 37 degrees celsius or failure to meet acceptance criteria for a dissolution test long term data show little or no change over time little or no variability how do you understand this change is percentage change from the previous value or the average value variability describes how far apart data points lie from each other from the center of the distribution this will be established by limited statistical evaluation methods little means very insignificant change statistical analysis is normally unnecessary in such cases y is equal to up to 2x but not exceeding x plus 12 months or if refrigerated if refrigerated y is equal to 1.5x but not exceeding x plus 6 months this is the recommendation so in such cases statistical analysis is not necessary the shelf life can be extended up to 2x where x is the time station at which the data was evaluated but there is a clause not exceeding x plus 12 months why there are two conditions let us see for example if you evaluate data after 12 months study and the data was satisfactory the shelf life could be 2 into 12 that is 24 months what is 12 plus 12 it's also same 24 months let us see another example if you evaluate data after 36 months 2 into 30, 36 will be 72 months whereas 36 plus 12 is only 48 so you have to assign only 48 months shelf life same type of approach for a refrigerated condition also remember that x is the time station for which the long term data is available and y is the proposed extension of the shelf life let us see case 2 one long term data amenable to statistical analysis and two statistical analysis performed in condition 1 it says data amenable to statistical analysis that means adequate data is available and the data is open for statistical analysis examples of detailed statistical approaches are provided in appendix b of the q1e guideline the examples include linear regression poolability tests and statistical modeling in condition 2 necessary statistical analysis is performed if backed by statistical analysis and relevant supporting data y is equal to up to 2x but not exceeding x plus 12 months or if refrigerated y is equal to up to 1.5x but not exceeding x plus 6 months so if the data is backed by statistical evaluation and supporting data the shelf life could be extended to 2x or x plus 12 for 25 degrees celsius storage long term study and 1.5x or x plus 6 for the study at refrigerated conditions if backed by relevant supporting data 
y is equal to up to 1.5 x but not exceeding x plus 6 months or if refrigerated y is equal to up to x plus 3 months. In case of only the relevant supporting data available and statistical analysis not performed, half of the shelf life as assigned above is recommended. That means for 25 degrees Celsius storage long term study, the shelf life could be only x plus 6 or 1.5 x and for refrigerated condition study, it will be x plus 3 only. Let us see case 3. If the answer is yes to the condition, significant change at accelerated condition within 6 months. If there is significant change at accelerated study conditions, answer the next question. Intended to be stored in refrigerator? If it is proposed to store the product at lower temperature than controlled room temperature, that is 25 degrees Celsius, it is necessary to approach as described in case 1 and 2 above. If the answer is no for this, go to the next query. Significant change at intermediate conditions? If the answer is no to this question, long term data amenable to statistical analysis and statistical analysis performed. Same strategy as described in case 2 has to be adopted. If backed by statistical analysis and relevant supporting data, y is equal to up to 1.5x but not exceeding x plus 6 months and if backed by relevant supporting data, y is equal to up to x plus 3 months. But in this case, the shelf life could be extended to only 1.5x or x plus 6 for 25 degrees Celsius storage conditions study and only x plus 3 for refrigerated condition study. Let us see the case 4. Significant change at accelerated condition within 3 months. The case 4 is discussed here. In this stage, if there is significant change within 3 months, please note that it is not 6 months, it is only 3 months. Go to the next step. No extrapolation. Shorter retest period or shelf life and data covering excursions can be called for. Statistical analysis if long term data show variability. You cannot extend the shelf life anymore. A shorter shelf life may be assigned based on the evaluation of statistical variation in the data. In this case, the statistical variability is clearly established. In this case, even the occasional excursions are considered while assigning the shelf life. If the answer is no to the change in the three month study, the following will apply. No extrapolation, shorter retest period, or shelf life can be called for statistical analysis if long term data show variability. While extending the shelf life of the product at each time station, a detailed report comparing the data as recommended in the guideline and the decision tree should be made. A new certificate of extension of shelf life should be distributed to all relevant sections for updating the new shelf life. Also, it is necessary to update the regulatory agencies and the customers simultaneously. A simple data sheet with a statement that there is no change in the data evaluated 
and the shelf life can be extended is not a good practice. I hope that the decision tree of ICH Q1E is understood well. Try to understand the section 2.4 of the guideline. Keep the decision tree and try to link each section. Understanding will be much better. Thanks for watching. For more videos, please do subscribe, like, and share. Thank you.